in this video, we're going to be taking a look at something called a solid of revolution. So a solid of revolution is formed when you take some curve here uh, and you look at the area under the curve. So you can kind of see this upper edge here represents uh, our function. And then we can imagine the area between that curve and the x-axis. And then we take that region and we rotate it about some uh, axis of rotation. And in this case, the axis of rotation is just going to be the x-axis. And in doing so, our two-dimensional region, you can imagine kind of is filling in all of that three-dimensional space as we rotate about that axis. And it's going to give us this figure here, uh, this vase-like figure. Now, if I wanted to try and find the volume of this vase, it might not be uh, so intuitive just by looking at it. Um, but we could, like we did when finding the area under a curve, estimate its volume by uh, dividing my interval into n subintervals of equal width, and then basically trying to uh, find the volume of each little slice that we have there and add them up to estimate our volume. And that's what we have here. So this is basically an estimation of this volume. So we've divided this region into 10 subintervals here. And by slicing it at uh, specific x values, it's giving us these different cylinders. And if I were to find the volume of each of these cylinders and add them up, it would be an approximation of the volume that we have here. Now, if we wanted to get a more accurate estimation, we basically would just divide this region into more and more subintervals. And ultimately, we would try and make the subinterval as small as possible. So it is essentially just a two dimensional slice, which we could then find the volume more accurately. Uh, and this idea is what gives us our definition of a volume. So if we have some solid S that lies in between x equals a and x equals b, then we can say if the cross sectional area of S lies in the plane, um, the xy plane, and it runs through x and is perpendicular to the x axis, right? Um, so the cross sectional area is cross sectioned through x perpendicular to the x axis. We call that uh, cross sections area a of x, where a is just some continue fu continuous function. Then the volume is going to be represented by uh, the sum of this right here. So this is just the area of the cross section. This is the width of our uh, cross section, right? So this is basically the width of our subinterval. And we would take the limit as n goes to infinity. So the number of subintervals is going to go off to infinity. And we would sum all that up. We know that this notation is just what represents an integral. So really, to find that volume, we're going to just integrate from a to b. And our integrand is just going to be the area of the cross section. So in the case that we have here, our cross section is just a circle, right? The area of the cross section then would be pi r squared. And then the dx represents basically the width that we have here. But it's going to be an infinitely small width. So we're not really going to be multiplying by any uh, finite value there. So it's just going to be the integral from a to b of the function that represents the area of our cross section. So let's go ahead and take a look at trying to figure out one of these. So in this, we want to find the volume of the solid that would be obtained by rotating about the x-axis, the region that lies under the curve y equals the square root of x from 0 to 1. So we have our curve here, y equals the square root of x going from 0 to 1. And we, can, we see that it's rotating about the x-axis. And when we rotate it about the x-axis, it's going to give us this shape here. So you can imagine it was just rotated about. And then this two-dimensional figure kind of filled in all of this space to give us this three-dimensional shape here. So it looks kind of like a parabola, but it would be like a solid parabola filled in. So in order for us to figure out how to find this volume, the first thing that we always want to do is just sketch what the cross section would look like. Um, 
So in this case, since the figure is going to be accumulating area this way, or accumulating volume essentially, stacking along the x-axis, we're gonna be integrating with respect to x. Um, so basically our, we are gonna be taking like slices vertically like this. And so we're integrating with respect to x here. So let's go ahead and sketch what our cross section would look like. So if I were to take a knife and just cut it through this solid figure here, I would have a cross section that is a circle. So go ahead and draw your circle cross section here. So now that you have your circle cross section, uh, we know that the distance from the x-axis to the outer portion of our cross section, right? This distance here just represents the radius. And the radius is represented by the height of our function, which is just the y value, right? So it's the y value of our function at whatever x value we're given. Um, but we are wanting to integrate this with respect to x, so we need to rewrite this expression here um, in terms of x. So we know that y is equal to the square root of x. All right, so we know that we need to integrate uh, the function a of x with respect to x. Right, and a of x basically just represents the area of the cross section uh, that we are looking at here. So let's go ahead and define a of x. So a of x is equal to, uh, this is just a circle, so it's going to be pi times r squared. Uh, we know that r is representing the y value, which is going to be the square root of x. So this is pi times the square root, sorry here square root of x squared, which is just pi times x. So that's going to be my area function in this. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and move this up here. So when we're integrating this, we're going from zero to one, right? Our cross section um, is just getting cut like this. So we're starting at zero and we're going to one and it's going to be of a of x dx. So we know that the function that defines the area of the cross section is just pi times x. So this is gonna be the integral from zero to one of pi times x integrated with respect to x. Pi is a constant, so I can pull that out. Uh, so this is gonna be equal to pi times the integral from zero to one of x with respect to x. Okay, so doing the antiderivative, what does that give us? This is going to give us pi times x squared over two, and we integrate this from zero to one. Go ahead and evaluate. Uh, plugging in the upper limit of integration is going to give me one half. Plugging in the lower limit is gonna give me zero, so it's gonna be pi times one half minus zero, oops, zero here, uh, which is going to give me pi over two cubic units. So this volume that we have here is going to be pi over two cubic units. All right. In this situation, we wanna find the volume of the solid uh, obtained by rotating the region bounded by y equals x cubed. So that's our cubic function here, y equals x cubed. Um, y equals eight and x equals zero. Uh, x equals zero is this here. So it's just the y axis. And this time we're rotating about the y-axis. So we're rotating this way. So if we were to take this region that we have here, rotate it about the x-axis, uh, we would get something like this here, right? And then this little curve like this. Um, and this, so we have like a 3D shape that looks like this here, okay? Um, now, because we have a 3D shape looking like this, if I were going to try and do cross sections that are vertical, we would have a lot of things that are changing here. Um, so that I don't have to deal with as many functions, I'm gonna take horizontal cross sections as you can see here. And it would be easier for us to write that function for the horizontal cross sections. So if I take horizontal cross sections, that means I'm stacking vertically which means I'm gonna to need to integrate with respect to y here, uh, which means I'm going to need to change my function to be x equals something with respect to y. 
which they did here. So we know that if we have y equals x cubed as our function, then x is going to equal the cube root of y. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and draw again our typical uh, cross section here. So in this case, our cross section is going to be again a circle. So we have a circle like this. And then we have, uh, whoops, here we are. And then we have our radius here. So this is R. In this case, uh, the measure of R is just represented by whatever the X coordinate is, right? So here the length of R is just whatever this X value is. Uh, here it's the length of this X value there. And so R is going to be equal to X. And since we're integrating with respect to Y, we need it as something in terms of Y. So it's gonna be equal to the cube root of Y. So instead of integrating now a of x, we want to integrate a of y because we're integrating with respect to y. So what is the function going to be for the area of the cross section? So if I know that the uh, measure of the cross section, so I guess my radius probably should have gone horizontal here, um, but it's a radius, so it's the same measure in any direction. Um, but I know that the measure of my radius is just whatever the x value is, which is going to be the cube root of y. It's a circle, um, so it's going to be pi times the radius squared again is the area of this cross section, which is pi times the cube root of y, the cube root of y squared, uh, which I'm going to rewrite as a rational exponent. Uh, this is y to the one third, so raised to the second is going to be y to the two thirds. So this is pi times y to the two thirds power. Um, so again, we are integrating with respect to y, so we're taking vertical cross sections here. The lowest value is going to be zero, so that's our lower limit of integration. And we're going as high as eight, so we're going to go from zero to eight here. So this integral is going to be the integral from 0 to 8 of pi times y to the 2 thirds with respect to y. I can again pull out the pi because it is a constant. And so now we have the integral from 0 to 8 of y to the 2 thirds with respect to y. OK, so now let's do the antiderivative. Uh, so adding 1 to the exponent is going to make this 5 thirds, and then we can divide by the reciprocal, or sorry, yeah. So then we divide by, sorry, divide by the new power, right? So add 1 and then divide by your new exponent, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's going to be 3 fifths y to the 5 thirds. And then we have the pi out in front. and evaluated from 0 to 8. Uh, so when you go ahead and plug in your limits of integration, what you're going to get, uh, 0 is going to give us 0 and all this. So we would be plugging in 8. Um, so 8, the cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the fifth is 32. 32 times 3 is 96. So we're going to get 96 pi over 5. So it's going to be 96 pi over 5 cubic units.